Hajipalli is a small village in the southern Indian state of Telangana. This model village today is a buzz with activity as it welcomes guests from far away lands. Walking in its by lanes are people from an amazing number of countries. Libya, Ethiopia, Mauritius, Tanzania, Iran, Tunisia, Bhutan, Ghana, Zimbabwe, Afghanistan, Jordan, Nigeria, Sudan and Vietnam are all represented here in Hajipalli today. Inside the village school, language is no barrier to communication quite clearly. As the school children in their honor sing poems in Telugu, the local language, Francis from Ghana happily sings along while the others observe intently. Why, you may ask. How, you may want to know. Whatever for, you may even inquire. I must mention that the technological acumen here is of great importance. It's very high. It will surely benefit me and uh, definitely benefit my country. I actually came here to improve my specialty on oil flow, measurement and calibration. When I started reading the information, I really, really wanted to come here. I've been selected from the Mauritius Police Force to attend the Advanced Fingerprint Science. I'm proud that I have performed my MTech from IIT Rurki. Get to know that there is an ITEC scholarship for the whole Sudanese officers and I was very lucky to apply and got the chance to make the interview and finally here doing my MTech at IIT Rurki. Well, these young men and women belong to a multitude of professionals who visit India year after year. They come from 161 countries to share India's experience of development under the Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation Program, or ITEC. Coming here, I have seen that the Indian government will have even opted that I wouldn't waste my money to train other people. Because there are people in India who still need this store small monies. But the Indian government has said that no, let us go and bring people from outside and come and train them. It's a very wonderful recommendation I would do anywhere I get a platform. ITEC, no doubt, is a unique endeavor. However, it is only one strand of India's developmental cooperation initiative. Extension of concessional lines of credit, assistance to help build infrastructure, humanitarian support and relief when disaster strikes, deputation of experts, and provision of consultancy services on request complete India's bouquet of assistance. Importantly, India's development cooperation program is firmly rooted in the belief that the best way forward for developing nations is to learn from one another's experience and to grow together. This indeed is the best way to embark on the developmental journey. When we started in 1964, the philosophy was to be responsive to the needs of other countries, to be open to sharing experiences and to trying to work with a sense of solidarity with other developing countries. Perhaps the sense of solidarity is natural because of a shared struggle against colonialism. In fact, even as a newly independent nation realizing the importance of South-South cooperation, India along with others had sought to create a new world order which would counter the stark dichotomies inherent in the North-South model of development. 
a world order in which all nations of the world would develop in voluntary partnerships based on mutual trust and dignity. A well-established truism which holds good till today. It was to provide a framework for doing so optimally that on 15th of September 1964, the then Indian cabinet formally announced the Indian Technical and Economic Cooperation Program. And after 50 years today, its global footprint and impact on building national capacities is keenly apparent. In fact, I have to say this, I'm very much appreciative of uh, what the Indian government has done has done and is doing regarding uh, imparting knowledge and experience to friendly countries because it's not because uh, India is the richest country or it's not because uh, they have nothing else to do with their money but you know it has been a very good gesture and I happen to think that uh, the experience of India is very relevant to the Ethiopian way of development because uh, India started from, from, from humble backgrounds and has gone quite far now. India has implemented a number of projects in infrastructure, hydroelectricity, power transmission, agriculture, industry, education and health. Notably in the neighborhood and other regions of the world, including Africa, Latin America, South Asia and the Gulf region. Actually, we have many common issues, uh, particularly in the developing world. It goes beyond just India's understanding. It's a mutual interchange of ideas, of experiences. So it enriches both the nations. Equally importantly, India's development cooperation program is an expression of India's commitment to share her expertise, learning and resources to help build national capacities of other countries traversing the same developmental pathways. Nobody ran in one day. Nobody ran in one week. No, no way. Yes, no doubt. No one learns in a day. And India too is still learning, each day, how to cope with the unique challenges she faces as a nation. But there too lie many a learning. They have the courage, all right, uh, to um, to, to, to succeed and to uh, achieve their dreams, all right, and to improve uh, uh, their situations, all right, and to, um, to be educated. And it's an example to be followed uh, by the other uh, villages in, uh, in our countries. I learned about the planning of rural area, especially from the village uh, people. People of, uh, living in Afghanistan, they are so poor. So I could understand from here and to planning for them any good for good uh, development projects for them interestingly each and every participant in the iitech courses comes from a different nation a diverse background and also professions however they all seem to be familiar with one aspect of india for sure I really do enjoy now Bollywood movies. Because I have been a fan of Indian movies. We used to know that Amanda since we uh, met a virgins. <laughs> Imagine the delight of the iTech trainees at CDAC Mohali when they were invited to act in a Punjabi film. But on a more serious note, what is common to all the participants is their desire for knowledge and learning to upgrade existing skills and learn new ones. Actually, no, but I had the passion of knowing. Because uh, I want to enhance my English. One aspect is the, the use of uh, the biogas that we've learned. It's simple technology we can be used in our various villages to improve their lifestyle. Perhaps the opportunity to learn hands-on that these courses provide are what increase their value for the participants. We are lucky we came, there is election here in India. 
So we visit some centers, see the photo, I see the machine, how it works, what they are doing. It's really interesting. Actually, there were many things that I liked about iTech programs, but uh, maybe the best thing I liked was that, that being an interactive learning experience and being in a very international and diverse uh, environment. That's really very unique about iTech programs. Whatever they learn in India is, however, not limited only to further their individual careers, but is a means to contribute to their societies in a purposeful manner. In this course, I think I will catch more things, more experience from here to carry out it in my country and to do it in my poor people in the rural area. And what we have learned here is really appropriate what I'm doing here. So the chance that I've got to improve my knowledge in many aspects. I think it will benefit us. And we work for the people of the subcontinent. Not only for the country, Bangladesh, it will benefit us to work for the people of the area also. For most newly emerging nations to achieve economic growth and independent decision making seems to be a tall order under any circumstances. And India, from experience, learned that national sovereignty and integrity are an imperative for achieving both. Therefore, unlike most nations, India willingly trained personnel from friendly nations in matters of defense. I'm very grateful to the government of India for this exchange program, because without it, uh, we definitely we wouldn't be advanced or we wouldn't copy what we are supposed to copy, like what I'm doing here now. Which in turn would not only enable them to strengthen their national boundaries, but also achieve developmental goals. I'm Skordunir Marzia from Bangladesh Air Force. The instructors in AFTC, they are really friendly and it will help me in my professional ground after completing this course. To build capacities which could help safeguard national sovereignty in times of peace and war have been an important component of India's development initiative all along. I think ITEC is a very good platform not only to learn from each other but also to establish people-to-people uh, -people contact. India on her side, without hesitation, opens the doors to some of her best and finest institutions for all of those seeking to upgrade their knowledge and skills. Really, it's very favorable places for studying, very environmentally friendly places for study, specifically this institute, Rookie, very prestigious one. Perhaps the circumstances under which India's development partnerships with other nations were born lend them its uniqueness. The diversity of initiatives which are offered by India for assistance in terms of structure and content are unparalleled. Quite simply because they reflect a range of development needs of many countries which articulate their needs for assistance from India. I think India is competent to, to hold such IT programs and uh, from my experience I found out that India government is very selective when choosing the institute that will participate or hosting people for IT programs and it's really a knowledge sharing, it's, it's really an effective uh, mechanism for knowledge sharing between India and other developing countries. It is not just what they learn but also how they learn is what is important for the participants course after course, year after year. I heard that uh, the English and uh, foreign language university is one of the um, one of the recognized universities in this region and as well as in the world for developing uh, English proficiency in methodological way. That's good. Admire. It's admire. Our university is known for its expertise in the area of uh, uh, language teaching and uh, uh, therefore they are well equipped to train uh, nationals from any country and uh, what they do is they modulate the courses every year for every program uh, based on the learners needs so it's a need based kind of a course the teachers are very good at teaching 
And uh, if I serve as an officer in my country, and I will not have this chance. This is the chance that I got to learn English. Apart from the regular courses, participating countries also benefit immensely from the specialized courses offered, which are tailor-made to suit their requirements. All these help their officials upgrade skills, helping them reach globally accepted standards in their own fields. Um, the training that they have given me have opened my eyes to the possibilities of cyber access, hacking. They teach you a lot of information that you would not get in the Caribbean, or I have not gotten a chance to really come to know these things that I've, I've taught here. Actually, I have learned a lot. I have learned a lot. As, an, as, a, as a network administrator, I didn't know about cryptography. Uh, I didn't know about the, even firewalls. I know I can see, I'm seeing firewall in my window or something, but I, I, I used to turn it off. India's plurality and multiculturalism just add myriad dimensions to her status as the world's largest democracy. As every Indian eligible to vote votes freely, India is only too happy to give others free lessons in democracy. The election commission of the India and the ITEC has done a very uh, big uh, task uh, to other countries to educate uh, people like us. Actually, I was so amazed by this experience. I uh, didn't know that you were that uh, developed on on many uh, levels, on the um, IT level, maybe uh, the voting machine is the first time we still use ballots. So I was amazed by this, uh, by the high level of uh, democracy, of transparency. Um, you have, uh, your people are civilized, voters, no problems, no, I wa no disputes. I was so amazed by this experience. All these uh, few skills, knowledge and experience that we have, it's at the disposal of the world. So one of the organized connectivity to share what we have and to help build others' capacity if they want is the ITEC course. It was a really an appreciable thing that uh, th most of the, the, the participants were African countries. So the Indian commitment to, to capacitate the African parliament to, to make them to be in a, in a similar row or in a similar line to, to, to be to strengthen the parliamentary function is, is a really an appreciable commitment. It helped the parliamentarian to understand better, to have a better knowledge and the skill to implement in the respective countries. As the whole world faces environmental challenges, it becomes even more important for developing countries to find optimal ways to ensure that the aspirations of their people are met, while at the same time, the available resources are used in a prudent manner. And therefore, India freely shares knowledge gathered in energy access and equity and use of water resources with other developing nations to help them meet the development versus environment challenge effectively. This Yorki, Rorki University previously, it's a very well-known university and it has been established by British only for the irrigation system. So it's a very nice thing to get up what they are having here from the Indian mentalities and apply it in my country, Sudan. Which ultimately is the very essence of South-South cooperation, to share experiences for equitable development. India's expertise in IT-related fields is far too well known across the world and therefore obviously in great demand. Not only has India helped set up many centers of excellence, including the Kofi Annan Center for Excellence in ICT in Ghana, the India Tanzania Center for Excellence in ICT at Dar es Salaam, and the India Vietnam Advanced Resource Center in ICT at Hanoi. India also offers scholarships to many participants for undergoing similar courses in India as well. As the participants learn to create their own virtual realities, it's not just the techniques, but also the intricacies of the craft which are required alongside. I am in the web design technology. 
And as I have learned many things about the web design technology, I got that experience and the confidence that I will be able to make world-class website with the help of this course. I work with these um, subjects before. Uh, I work in the university and, uh, and the Aga Khan School. And uh, uh, there I use it, but now here I uh, um, learn um, new, uh, for example, I, uh, before I used HTML4, now here I learn HTML5. It is the flexibility of India's development cooperation program which constantly allows for innovation and endeavors to meet the requirements of partner countries to satisfy their expectations. And so, even as iTech turned 50 this year, it continues to attract an increasing number of participants to India, such as these first-timers from Rwanda, who came to learn some very specialized skills. Very aptly, they are learning about making fragrances in a part of India, which has been producing them since the time of the Mahabharat. Actually, this, this training is based on uh, upgrading entrepreneurship in the youth of Rwanda. And uh, through this training, we've learned a lot, right from cultivation, processing, managerial status, and up to the level of entrepreneurship. So I look forward to use the knowledge I got here, I got from here to, to enhance entrepreneurship in Rwanda. We are training them for the management skills, soft skills, entrepreneurial aspect, so that the moment they go back, these 19 Rwandans should emerge as the Indian fragrant ambassador in Rwanda. A new world order would surely require a new breed of leaders and managers. And for developing nations, it becomes imperative, no doubt, to have trained decision makers. The most complex principles of management amazingly can be learnt quite simply. Almost like child's play. Or so it would seem. We have a lot of participation, proactive uh, uh, learning methodologies we have. It is not a one-way learning, it is a give and take. They are uh, talking about leadership skills, they're talking about uh, inner governance, they're talking about uh, uh, what is, uh, ethics and values in uh, the leadership styles. They're talking on various aspects of financial management also. There is a lot of focus on leadership and management of the team of the projects as well. That's why I believe that uh, this will really help me to improve the way I work. And Be it enhancing spoken English skills or learning about fragrances, as new skills acquired build their confidence, no gold seems out of reach. In the future, yes, I'm aspiring to be, if not even the Director General in charge of the CID headquarters, then one of the topmost. So I'm very uh, interested to become a very good manager in the near future. Another chance to improve my knowledge so that I can create or to, to create my own company about the essential oils or the fragrance or the flavors. I was like recently appointed to general manager and actually when I took the course I was a senior economist so it has helped me a lot in my career. For participants who come to India or experts who go out of India to other nations, it is no surprise that the cultural dialogue and the social interaction fostered creates lifelong bonds. The teachers are good, they know how to pass their knowledge, they are high skilled. I have formed a Facebook group and I'm the admin of that group and we still keep in touch, we talk, we exchange a lot of family events and occasions and like a lot of Indian celebrations, we keep in touch through that. And one of the trainer actually is one of my friends on Facebook and I still keep in touch with her. I will call my trainers, my mother, my father, my brother, my sister. They are, uh, are definitely loving people. I, can, I don't have anything bad to say about these people that have trained me for the past five weeks. Perhaps the most unique aspect of India's development cooperation program is that the learning is at various levels, be it mastering the intricacies of yoga asans. I do remember many, many good uh, memories about India, but maybe yoga classes were the most thing I still remember now because that was the very first time to have uh, an intensive course for every day, every morning, 
about uh, yoga classes in, uh, with a professional yoga trainer, so it's something I still remember. Yeah. Or then savoring the many flavors of chaat, unfamiliar yet tantalizing on the taste buds. Foods are a bit spicy, but I like them. I like also in India, I like uh, Indian foods, but especially vegetarian foods. I feel it that I'm in my home and I have taken all the foods and it, this is very good for me. Nor is it only about getting to eat Indian food for the first time, but also an opportunity for cooking your own national food for your batchmates and introducing them to the flavors of your unique cuisine. Some of the participants from Iraq, they, they cut salad. They said that they are very fond of the salad, so they cut the salad. Uh, Oman participants, they prepare the barbecue. And uh, then it was a gathering of, uh, of around 15 or 20 odd uh, ITEC participants. They, and uh, that was my, uh, my batch uh, in 2002, uh, which made me emotionally attached to each, uh, each and every uh, participant. Not to forget the time a football match was played with a unique team comprising of players, each one of whom was from a different country. No, we put things together and we definitely had a good game. Right now I'm sweating here, <laughs> but very happy. So obviously it's not restricted to learning work skills or about getting to know India better, but much beyond. India, in fact, becomes a gateway for many of the participants to meet people from so many countries of the world at the same time, at the same place, for the first time in their lives. To live and learn with people from so many nations is not only a rare opportunity, but also an education in itself. Well, of course, with all those friends from 90 countries, uh, it's not like, we, of course, being in India is one aspect, but to get, to get the opportunity to be together with them, as if like, We've been, all, we've been to all those 90 countries, uh, different countries, their cultures. It, it can be clearly seen in eh, the way they put on their dress, the way they talk, how we share things together. So I think it is amazing. In this program, we have given a lot of opportunities to uh, exchange our ideas with other students, those who came from different countries. The maturity level has, has grown. I've come to, together to see different views of people. And um, I mean, they, you, you would not say that everybody has an upbeat personality. You have people with different personalities because we have different minds. We come from different backgrounds. But through it all, we have gained the maturity, the understanding that we can be as a team, we can be as a group that will come together to make this a good experience. Uh, the most interesting aspect of uh, interacting with uh, participants from different parts of the world uh, is that you uh, understand that uh, while there are a lot of differences in terms of uh, culture and language, food, at the end of the day we are all uh, human beings and uh, we like the same things. In these times when we frequently find communities and countries in conflict, India's development cooperation initiatives are helping create an environment conducive for international cooperation and understanding. And I think it's a very good starting point for peace creation in the world. Because the more you learn about your brother, you know his differences, then you can live with peace. And also it's not only the Indian experience, but the experience among different countries as we are, we were in 23 countries. It was an important commitment to, to, to make those uh, parliamentary groups to come together and to share experience on how each of the countries are working. We are in touch with uh, my classmates uh, from uh, different countries and the different uh, culture from Argentina, Brazil, uh, Sri Lanka, India and uh, also Latin American countries. One of the most striking features of this that there are actually bridges of, of actual personal experience that are created. And I think that is as valuable an asset as we have. 
and the learning never stops. Even as they leave their classrooms, the entire country seems to become a classroom for them. The colors, sights, sounds, smells and foods of India. Her culture and diversity, her history and monuments, they all seem to teach them something. So 50 in the classroom, 50 outside. So I'm going home with 100%, not 98%. We always hear about the Taj Mahal, for example, but we didn't know there was many other different places uh, which are beautiful as Taj Mahal also. We went to Gwalior, it was amazing, the Red Fort. Uh, everything we saw was amazing. I didn't expect uh, India to be like that. It's a very beautiful country. With each developmental milestone achieved, India obviously has more to share. I would think India is in a position for this knowledge transfer, for this technology transfer. Perhaps a perfect example is when just after the success of her Green Revolution, India helped set up a rice research institute in southern Vietnam, assisting Vietnam to become a major exporter of rice in the world today. We share uh, common problems because our economies are at uh, similar levels. Our people also experience similar problems. Whereas the Western world, it's a different world, where they have nothing much to compare. Whereas India has gone through this uh, cycle of development. We are ahead. So the developing world would like to emulate India rather than the Western world. It is indeed amazing what dimensions this cooperation has acquired over the years. What began as 70 scholarships for students from neighboring countries today has a global footprint and reach. Our uh, main concern is technical exchanges and mutual support. And South-South cooperation is something on which we are strongly there. It's not as though India is a perfect country. But then we can learn from them, they can learn from us. The substantial growth in India's external development assistance program in the past few years has resulted in an ever larger number of projects and countries getting covered under its ambit. It has also resulted in a felt need to more effectively handle India's projects right from the policy formulation stage through the implementation, handing over and monitoring in close cooperation with the partner countries of the projects. In January 2012, to streamline the delivery and effectiveness of India's external development assistance, the Development Partnership Administration was established in the Ministry of External Affairs to effectively handle India's development assistance program and to build in-house technical, financial and legal expertise required for effective project implementation. A small hub in the Ministry of External Affairs, the Development Partnership Administration ensures that all these diverse strands of developmental assistance extended by India are expeditiously implemented. We don't believe that we are like a donor which we are supposed to give, it, give out something to, to other countries. But in a South-South cooperation, the idea is mutual benefit and mutual learning too. And as India gives, she too receives in abundance. She too is enriched with the unconditional love she is given. Because I've fallen in love with India, I really want to come back and do my master's here. Every, every person in the world should visit India once in his life. I wish, I wish if I had the opportunity, I would come. I will come because learning, there is no end. I uh, intend to uh, be back uh, to India another uh, once time again, <laughs> once again. I, at least, at most, 100 times, if the chance permits, I'll bring thousands of my colleagues to come and learn so that we go and develop our country. This is the most valuable thing which we acquire, and that is the friendship 
uh, of, uh, of foreign participants. Perhaps which is why lessons learnt with friends are so special. They envelop you not only in knowledge, but in love and bonhomie. They have the ability to empower illiterate poor grandmothers with solar electrification technology to light up their homes and lives. They help build roads to prosperity. They enable young professionals with new skills to help them translate their aspirations for a better life into reality. But most importantly, they help build bridges which transcend distances of language, color, creed and nationality. Helping one to understand, accept and celebrate the other as a friend forevermore.